Yes, it's your girl Tweet, and you are watching The Scorpion Show with Kevin and Mikkel. Make sure y'all like and share this video, please. And also make sure y'all go to iTunes, Amazon, all that, and buy my new EP. It's called Simply Tweet the EP. And look out for the album, it's coming soon. Bye. Yes. <laughs>
Yeah, it's just time for a new change for them. So, I want to um, open up. First of all, make sure this video will get 3,000 likes. If you're watching on your cell phone, click that thumbs up button. If you're watching on your iPad or your whatever other devices out there, because you know I'm on Team Apple, click that thumbs up. And if you're at your computer, please click it. Um, we're going to open up with... This is why I need to have my notes ready. Um, Drake, because this was the talk of the day. Let me go. I'm gonna go to that yeah. thing where I was reading it to. Well, Drake kicked Future off of his tour, and they were supposed to go on this 39 city tour with Miguel. It was gonna be Drake, Miguel, and Future. Well, Future was doing a little interview with Billboard magazine, and he said some stuff off the record. But one of the workers at Billboard let it be known what Future said about Drake's music, and. Yeah, what Drake said about, I mean, what Future said about Drake's um, new album, Nothing Was The Same, is Drake made an album of hits, but it doesn't grab you. They're not possessive. They don't make you feel the way that I do. So, you know, Future was like, you know, you know, once the word got out on what he said, he was like, you know, um, I respect Drake, blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, the tour, I guess some of the tour dates got pushed back. I don't, I don't think it was because of that. It might have been because of ticket sales. And then we find out that over the weekend, Drake was like, you know, I'm taking you off the tour. And Future was supposed to get paid 40000 per show. So now Future is suing Drake for lost money. So he's going to sue Drake for $1.5 million. Well, well, yeah, he's suing him for lost money, but he's also suing him for lost money that he hasn't made yet. Yeah, because, because he was supposed to go on this tour yeah. and got kicked off. Now, I don't know if it was in the contract that he'll still get paid or whatever. But, you know, something me and Dennis was talking about. And Dennis made a great point. Of course, I would have thought it too, but... Oh, <laughs> oh, oh wow. That's the, oh, boy. No, he was like... He's Albert like, Einstein. Okay. Oh, okay. You just think of everything. He's Go saying, ahead. you know, this is... It's like biting the hands that feed you. It's like mm -hmm. somebody doing some stuff for you, and then you go out and give them a backhanded compliment, and then expect for you to still... Work with that person. Dennis thought of that all by himself. Well, I, I say, of course, I would have thought of that. Oh, too. I was about to say, I mean, right. a five year old would have thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> but right. it's true. I mean, I was going to say that until you told me Dennis thought of something amazing. I'm thinking, okay, well, let me No, I'm just saying. Because like, oh, I want to be like, yeah, because bitch, you heard me say it. So, you know. But it's like, true. Yeah. Because naturally, I'm not going to I'm not gonna sit here and do an interview by, my, by myself and somebody says something about the Scorpion show. And I say, well, you know. <laughs> well, you know the girls on the bike. <laughs> well, right? well, you, well, yeah. <laughs> like, say something like that. Say something like, well, you know, mm. people only really watch for me because Kevin, he can be this and he can be that. And I mean, it's true. He does need, and he is this. And then, like, naturally you would have every right to be upset because yes that's my opinion and I know people are probably like but that was Future's opinion yes it was but at the same time like for instance I always tell people I can't stand my fucking job I can't stand it I can't stand it I can't stand it but never ever ever would I go on any social network and say I can't stand it or what it is that I can't stand uh, about it all right. you know what I mean because <laughs> Let me tell you something. Nowadays, people are on people's social media reading. Mm -hmm. And if I don't like somebody in my job, I can't get on Instagram or Twitter and say, oh, I can't stand this person. I can't stand this person. I mean, we all have jobs that we can't stand, but I ain't going to get on there and tell y'all what it is that I don't like about it. Because if my employers see it, they can hold that against me. And there are jobs that have fired people because of what they posted on social, social media. media. And they still do. And they still do it. Just like there are schools who have suspended students because of what they posted on social media. So yes, you can't bite the hand that feeds you because look what happens. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the day, that is Drake's tour. <laughs> so he can hire and fire who he wants. So I mean, I feel bad for Future, but Future, you know, you, you're younger in this business. You're just yeah. learning. So, you know, just be careful on what you say the next time. Let that be a lesson learned. That, can you just imagine if Future, or let's just imagine if Drake, if Jay-Z would have invited Drake on his tour and Drake would have did that. Sure. First of all, wouldn't no rapper in their right mind do that to somebody like Jay-Z? Mm -hmm. So then Future, why would you do that to Drake? Drake invited you onto his tour and then you go and say this. Certain things, let me tell you something. I sit around, Kevin and I know quite a few celebrities and in private, in private with these celebrities, we've had private conversations. 
and we've also had private conversations about different celebrities. I would never repeat what I've talked about with any of your celebrities, and I wouldn't expect them to say it out. Because some of the things is like personal. You don't want to say that out loud or for the world to hear. So, Future, if that's how you really felt about Drake's album, you should have kept that to yourself. That should have been between you and Past. I mean, you and Sierra, sorry. <laughs> that, what you y'all are the past. Future and the past, you get it? <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, when she is from the past. She is the You tried it. What little one said? You tried it. Bet you did. Oh, I feel the Sierra. Mm. That was a little jokey joke. But anyway, you get what I'm saying? You should have kept that between you and her. Yeah, so Drake, I'm sorry, but I mean, <laughs> teacher, <laughs> good night. Yeah. I have to side with Drake on this one. <laughs> so, let me tell y'all, I am really excited about the TLC movie that's coming on next Monday at 9 o'clock. I am going to miss wrestling, <gasps> and I am going to watch VH1 the whole night. <laughs> You're gonna miss wrestling for I'm one night? For one night. For more. TLC. I've been missing it for the past 13 years. Yeah. You're gonna miss it for a night. Yeah, one night. One what? night only. What? Like, you better well, go ahead. Well, before I talk about the TLC <laughs> movie, who watched wrestling last night with Cody Rose and Goldust winning the belts last Gold night? Dust. That was a good Gold. ass match. They got that shit on. They got it on. Congrats to Gold Dust and Cody Rhodes. Do you watch that? They don't watch wrestling. But going back into the TLC thing, I am just so hyped because first I seen one of the trailers. I only seen like a, a two minute trailer. But this time they showed like a super trailer where they were showing the drama, what was going on. They showed the girls fighting in the hotel. They showed them coming in the Clive Davis office. They showed... Uh, Chili saying that baby is about me. I guess Dallas also had another baby. And she's like, I'm supposed to be one of the baby. They show left eye lighting the shit on fire. They show how they got the record. Oh, this is going to be a good movie. I ain't even got to see the whole movie, know it's gonna be good. And what really, you know, what really excites me is that I was really hating on little mama playing left eye, but she's the one that looked like the original member the most. And just the way her mannerisms and everything is. Like, Lil Mama, you fucking did that. You, I ain't even seen the movie yet. It's just, I'm just super excited for it. Um, are you going to watch it next week? I think I will. You don't seem so excited about it. <laughs> I'm, I, you know. I mean, I'm excited. I'm before, jumping for joy in the inside. You just don't before, know the before, before, you know, because before, before Destiny's Child and stuff, like, TLC used to be on my radio, you mm-hmm. know, going back to What About Your Friends and Hat to the Back and all of that shit. Like, mm-hmm. I really liked them, but once TLC went bankrupt and shit, and you didn't really pay no mind to them, and then Destiny Shaw came along, I was on their bandwagon. I was like, okay, because t- not only was TLC broke, you know, Tony was going through her thing, but, you know, they Tony both came practicing. Oh, you tried it. Why would you add her to They both place? came because they oh, both they came back out. They both were broken. They both came back out the same time. That's what I but remember. You still tried it. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. How you want to equate Tony Braxton with TLC? Because they time? all came out the same time. No, because they all were broke except for Destiny. <laughs> <Shot. laughs> you, no, you tried it, bitch. You know, you ever heard of shade and then underline shade? That was no, underline shade. That was no, think about it. Shade. He equates Tony Braxton, TLC, and Destiny Child. Two groups and a broke ass. You <laughs> <laughs> tried it. Oh, you tried it, bitch. <laughs> I'm shady, so you know I do shade when I see it. I never throw shade. <laughs> but it comes on Monday, October 21st at 9 o'clock. Make sure you watch it because I will be live tweeting. But Tony Braxton is that bitch. Okay? Yes, and, she uh, slays. And, and Tony just came out with a new video on Friday with Babyface. Okay. And she went back to that short fucking hair. First of all, can we just say how good both Babyface, Babyface and Tony Braxton look? And they yeah. both are like in their 40s. Oh, yeah. To- Whoa. <laughs> what? Whoa! Whoa! Dude, wait, Whoa. Wait. Tony's still in her 40s. And babies in his 50s. Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, we're going to have to stop calling him baby faces and just call him daddy. I'm <laughs> future. Right. Daddy. And, and congratulations to baby face because baby he just got baby a star. Daddy. Yeah, he just got a star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I know that's so, right. So you know all the every you know uh, Usher was there, Tony was there, L.A. Reid, you know a lot of the industry girls they was there. Yeah. So congratulations to them. And um, Tony Braxton and Babyface album comes out November twenty fifth, 
and Braxton Family Values will be back on November 12th, and I will be discussing Braxton Family Values. But until then, you know, I'll be sticking with my regular shows. So, um, let's get back into the basketball. We can talk about the basketball eyes. I just, I just to shout out to Kim Kardashian and Kanye West for their beautiful baby shower. What baby shower? They, they showed it on TV? Yeah, the baby shower was gorgeous. Kanye was there? Yeah, he came at the end, but I didn't see when he came because I had to uh, mm. take a shower. Oh, yeah, at the, that whole night of Outfest. You. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, at least I picked up on one half of the day, and you picked up on the night, and I seen your videos, I had a and ball. you had a ball. Yes, I did. I was having too much fun to even record. What was going on? Let me there. tell you something. I had a ball. When I say you have to go with the right people, mm -hmm. I went but, with the But right. not only that, this was the best Outfest. And if y'all don't know what Outfest is, in Philadelphia, we just had this big old party celebrating National Coming Out Day, but they do it on that Sunday. And they shut down the whole neighborhood in Philadelphia, which is, um, it's an area from, from 13th and Walnut to about... 13th and Spruce over to 12th Street. Yeah, they shut the yeah. whole area down. Like and a big old two block block yeah, party. Yeah, basically. Yeah. You like got your drag board. performances, you got your regular performers. I saw Pan the Bell. Oh, Not the Bell. Oh, okay, the <laughs> drag. <laughs> I'm cute. Was you see her in the blue dress? Yes. Okay! <laughs> RuPaul's drag, she lip sync for her life. What? She, oh, yeah. and she was Did she? She okay. She, she said, ah, 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 ah. I said, God, you better go ahead. Yes. So, so yeah, it's our big thing. And this year it was better because the weather agreed. It didn't rain yes. like last year. You know me. I, I was, they, but why don't they have that in the summertime? I said that, I said something like that should be done in the summertime when it's more, the weather is better mm -hmm. it, it's much better and then i thought that it should be like at least twice a year but they always like i feel like philly is the only city i know with so many prides because they have a pride in june when they shut the street down and then you have black gay pride and then it's followed by white pride yeah. which is a pride for everybody so they always got something going on like that's yeah, but a, black gay pride here in philly is not as that's why i'm gonna i'm gonna do something that makes that better because next year's gonna be the 15th anniversary so I ain't gonna say my plans now when nobody try to take it. But I really wanna do something and I really I trying to start on it now. Um but back to the basketball wives, shout out to them. Look, Evelyn's fashions was tired to me. I can't lie, that shit was tired. But if that's what she wanna sell, Evelyn, go ahead and do your thing. You know, hopefully you get like Sears or Walmart. I don't know what store you're gunning for, but but I guarantee uh, what I was. What, it's going to sell. Her her sales wasn't that. I mean, her sales. Her dresses wasn't that amazing. But I think, like she said, this is just a preview of what's to come. But also the stuff that she was showing, I can definitely see it being really successful for her, especially like during the summer and springtime, mm -hmm. because females love those maxi dresses. They love those, and then. Evelyn really did make those dresses for women with bodies because the, all her models, they look beautiful on their bodies. Especially that one with that black dress on that they were talking about with the big fat butt. The light skin. Oh, one yeah, when Shona really went off for her. Yeah, like. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was just good to see them in London. I'm glad that. Um, was the two the, the two Susie girls? And yeah, they got they got their thing over with because it was petty. Yeah. But for but for uh, Susan say she don't know why they was fighting. That's bullshit. She right. Like don't make up no they shit like that. The she shit was already she was, yeah. Oh. She, she wasn't fighting nobody. But it looked like she gonna fight next week. Yeah. Yeah. Who was it? Oh, that was oh my god! You know what? <laughs> you know what? No, really. Do you know what? What? No, because I saw that preview. Kenya found a way to creep her ass back onto the show, didn't she? Yeah. I guess it was still in her contract that, oh no, bitch, y'all got me another season. <laughs> y'all me another season plus well, a few episodes. Kenya, yes, Kenya Bell. Well, she was on the last When it was at the horse race. And the girl that can't sing, the one that remade no, the Beyonce no. video. Yeah. Yeah. She, but she I wasn't even on for a whole season that, was she that? She was on there. That on there. She just crazy. And then she was doing some type of performance that was whack. 
I just want them to stop playing. Cause <laughs> if you going if you going to take your music career seriously, please do it the right way. There's only two women on reality TV that I respect for doing their little thing. That's K Tamar, Tamar and K Michelle. I'm gonna say Kmar. Tamar and K Michelle. Those are the only two singers that took their career seriously and actually had songs on the radio and actually had songs that debuted on a Billboard chart True. at number one on r and You know what? You're absolutely right because out of, Michelle, all, of reality out of all the reality shows, K Michelle and both Tamar, and it's so weird that both of them are actually feuding with each other, but yet they were actually the only two that actually was on these reality shows, successful reality something. shows, and then came out with music that actually went on the radio. You heard it on the radio. You're absolutely right. Wow. Um, that should be a sign for them. That's why, that's I, I tweeted this a, a couple a while ago, but that's why I wanted them to stop that big room because it's like, y'all are really like leading the past for people that mm -hmm. on reality TV that we can take serious because otherwise they say, oh, I'm, I got an album coming out. Look at fucking Olivia. I will be accepting idea. offerings at the ScorpionShareYahoo.com via PayPal. Thank you. Yes, but I'm just saying. <laughs> Look at, she had three seasons. That's two years on one on one of the number rated show, number one rated shows. And all she had was one song, no mixtape, no album, no record deal. You let a bitch named K. Michelle creep up from YouTube. Get a record deal on Love Hip Hop Atlanta. Yes, she has. And we already knew struggles. who Olivia was before we knew who K Michelle was. Yeah. Way. Now that we talking about the past. She was okay. On the past she too. was on. I she had, had Biz Am. Before that, she had Biz Am. Yeah. Oh, that that was, was actually yeah, that. Clive Davis's number one girl before Alicia Keys. He got rid of her and said, "I'm gonna get Alicia Keys." What? And well, then, he, he looked like he did. Well, he did he okay. Did, okay. He did Okay. He knew what he was, he was on. <laughs> Alicia brought him all the, all those money, all that money and those Grammys. Okay. Okay. And what did Olivia bring him? Well, he told no bitch you better get out. Okay, because you won't be a man. They said they called up and said, Clive, we want to book Olivia for. He said she don't work anymore. Mm -mm. <laughs> Not in there. Uh, and she thought she was gonna do. Something. I really thought that she was gonna do something with G Unit because. G Unit at that time, oh my god, we so I'm so old now. I know, right? They always you had a hit song on the radio. Yes. That's crazy how big around 2003, 2004. And I always somebody is burning something. Go ahead. G Unit and um uh was well, 50 Cent and G Unit with Beyonce because remember they were all big at the same time when Beyonce came out with Did You See Love mm -hmm. and then when those award shows was coming out, G Unit and Beyonce was like winning or they were being nominated for all these different awards. Oh, that that was such a long time ago, and now look. You got G Unit, you like, huh? Okay. Who? And then the game was on G Unit, and then they was feuding, and then Young Buck got broke, and I don't and know what happened. Lloyd, what happened with, yeah, what happened with Lloyd Banks? I don't know. Hopefully, he got his face fixed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! So, you know, um, I don't, I, I don't know, but you know what? I really do like the game on his reality show. I don't want. See, I told you, like Athena. See, Bravo, I have my, uh, not Bravo, VH1, I have my shows down to a science, and y'all know at 9 o'clock I switch to wrestling. Y'all can have the 8 o'clock hour, but at 9, that's it. But, um, I, I really do enjoy, um, I enjoy the basketball while I was at 8, but I, I'm going to be watching Love & Hip Hop New York, and I will be watching... Oh, yeah, What's that? Yeah, I, and I really want to get into Black Ink because a lot of people keep writing us uh, saying it. So it, it must be well, that I good. You, I told you it's good. And you know, I ain't going to steer you in the wrong way, Kevin. Yeah, I know. It's good. It really is good. And I'm telling you, you will. I was watching it today. Hey, my nephew was cursing. Duchess. Out. Yeah, my nephew was cursing. Duchess. Out. She's a bitch. First of all, Duchess is the reason why all those people don't work at Black Ink anymore. Mm -hmm. Once Caesar and her started messing with each other, she mm -hmm. got all up in C's ear. Uh-uh, you don't need them in here no more. Me and you, we can run this business together. You don't need them. And what he started doing, he started mm -hmm. acting funny to the people that he grew up with and started cutting them off. For a piece of pussy. For a piece of fucking pussy. <laughs> to the point where they all got matching, they both got matching fucking tattoos. And how about this? King and queen matching tattoos. And how about this? When he was, when it was time, because she got hers first, dummy. When it was time for him to get his, she overheard him telling the tattoo artist, well, 
if the relationship don't work out, something like that, I can always say, or, so, no, or something real stupid. And she was like, oh, it sucks. It's real dumb. Like, but real disrespectful. Like, why would you say this? And this is your girlfriend. But, yeah, it's really good. And Duchess, and then when um, Caesar's um, mentor in the tattoo um, game, she came to visit the shop. And she was like, well, where's the people that I'm used to seeing in here? And he was like, they was like, well, they don't work here no more. And then she was like, well, what the fuck is going shop. on? Like, what's going on? And then, you know, they tried to... They tried to flip the flip the script like, oh, they were the problem, but and then but the but his mentor was like, well, you know what, you gotta fix this because you don't y'all known each other for years, y'all don't let no little squabble make y'all break up, and then sees he didn't want to hear that he gonna say yeah she's supposed to be on my side, no she's not supposed to be on your side she's supposed to let you know if you're wrong. And if you're right, and clearly you weren't right, she didn't see you being right, so she told you that you were wrong, and he didn't like that. Like, I, I don't understand people like that. And then he's going at first, and I think it was him doing, you know, when they do the little confessionals when they're talking, and he was like, yeah, because, yeah, such and such, she's here, and she won't let us know who's right. And then when she told him that he was wrong, he, he got mad. Him. Like, mm. you're wrong. You're wrong. Well, I, well, I can't wait to get into this. Yeah, it's, it's a good a, show. It sounds like a black dirty many soap episodes opera that I'm going to get so into. I don't know how many episodes they're in so far, but... it got to be no more than four or five. <sighs> it just came back on. You know... I will say this, all of the guys, except for Teddy, but all of the I guys, like Teddy. Teddy is a thicker one. He's not bad looking. Um, well, he is a He smoke a lot because you can see it on his lips. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like when people smoke so much where you can see it in his lips. I don't like that. But he's the, he's the only one. But the rest of the guys, they all have horrible teeth. Caesar has horrible teeth. Puma, oh my God. Kevin, when you see Puma's mouth. Is that a guy or a girl? It's a guy. <laughs> and has a beautiful little baby. I don't know who. What well, they, they always mom. get their teeth fixed. Kevin, he wears dentures on some episodes, but he don't keep them in. I... But won't he get some veneers? Mm. No, won't he just get all that shit that's in his mouth <laughs> knocked out? <laughs> yeah, get some Let's veneers. Start up. That's what Patty Jackson style. did. That's what we did. They, they took all them teeth out and put some new music. That was fake. That was fake teeth. And Whitney. oh, you Whitney was learning how to talk. Yeah, she was learning how to talk again. Mm -hmm. And people kept saying, "Why Whitney talking so funny now?" Because that's not her mouth. Mm -hmm. You ain't gonna try Whitney on every video. No, but, <laughs> no, but it's true. You know, some people won't say it, but I will. Mm -hmm. So, so last week I got a glimpse. I watched the interview with Kanye West on Jimmy Kimmel Live. And if y'all didn't know, like a couple weeks ago, Kanye West went on this rant against Jimmy Kimmel cursing him out and, you know, just saying all kinds of stuff because Jimmy Kimmel did a skit where, you know, Jimmy Kimmel always uses kids to do, um, like he'll make fun skits. of The Bachelor yeah. and things like that. So Kanye West really didn't find it too fucking funny. So Kanye went on the show to discuss what happened and why he was so upset and why he gets mad at the media. <laughs> and my thing is this. I like Kanye and everything, but he comes off too arrogant, and he comes off like, like I'm the shit. Yes, you could be the shit, but my thing is just be humble about it. You don't have to say, if even if you know you're a creative genius, you don't have to tell the world, yeah, I'm a creative genius. I'm a creative genius, and I'm going to be different because the media don't want you to feel like you somebody and, and when you are this and, and I'm tired of letting people <coughs> tell me not to do this and not to do that and when I want to do what I want to do it just it just makes him sound crazy and the reason why it makes him sound crazy is it's not what he's saying it's the way that he's saying this stuff so I'm and I'm like and I get him so well but it's just like and y'all say this and y'all say that and I and I know I'm the best. I don't need nobody to tell me that I'm the best. Blah 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 and da 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 It was terrible. His attitude is just like for for instance, you would never hear Beyonce come off and tell you guys I'm the shit when she knows I'm the shit. She doesn't have to say she's the shit because she walks it, she she lives it. You could tell. Kanye, just be well, you I don't know. know. Jay Z don't even. Jay Z yeah, don't even come off like that. like that. As a matter of fact, Jay Z barely does interviews. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the best way to keep yourself <coughs> out of trouble. You know what? Excuse Denzel me. Washington said something a long time ago in an interview. Because you know I always follow these celebrities when they do these interviews. And stuff. Yes. He said something a long time ago in an interview, and it's very, very true. Somebody asked him in an interview once, "How come we never see you and your family out and about doing things like this? You know, like we see other celebrities?" And he said. 
when you want to be seen, you go where you are seen. He said, we don't want to be seen, so therefore, we don't go there. Basically, what he was saying, those, those celebrities that you see all the times at certain places, they go there because they know they're going to be seen. Kanye West, you don't have, like Kevin said, you don't have to be this arrogant bitch. We know that you're Kanye West. We know that you're the shit. We don't need for you to say it. Just like Denzel Washington. We know Denzel Washington's that million dollar man. We don't need him. We don't need to see him to know that he's that million dollar man. He's that nigga. First of all, Denzel Washington <laughs> makes a movie every fucking, what, five? Every fucking five or six years. And then it goes to number one. And then he goes away. And you don't see him no more until like another five or six years. Then he comes out with another big movie. That's how, like Kanye West, won't you be like Denzel Washington? Go, the, but Kanye West has to be like this arrogant thing where you just be like, oh my God, I love his music so much, but why is his attitude so shitty? And then you say to yourself, the way he speaks so highly of his mother, you know his mom couldn't have possibly raised him to be arrogant like that. I don't think anybody's mom would raise him to be arrogant like that. Mm -hmm. He just has this arrogant, like there's, when you hear him speak, like you said, there is no humbleness at all. I used to have this teacher in high school named Miss Polk. She was a culinary arts teacher. She would always, and at that time I didn't understand what she meant, but now I do. She would always tell us to humble yourself, humble yourself. And Kanye West, all he needs is for the right person to come down and tell him he needs to humble himself. Because right now it ain't, it ain't flying to, he ain't looking to, you know. No, he's not. This lady at my job, she calls it special. When we see somebody who ain't. Who, who screws ain't too tight? We say, yeah, this is special. Then he 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 fights with the paparazzi. Look, now I understand him going off because the paparazzi was on his property, and that was a big no no. But all of this fighting with the paparazzi, them asking you questions and you cursing them out when you can simply say nothing. That's what you should do. Just say nothing because you're giving you're giving the press what they want. Oh, I can anger this nigga. All I got to do is yeah. put my camera in his face okay. and he's going to go gonna off. Go off and Watch this. Some good snapshots and some good video. Okay. And it's going to be the headline news on TMZ, a AMC, VMC, VH1, <laughs> BET, CBS, ABC, 123. It's going to be on all those. I, I, I just couldn't be. I couldn't <laughs> be paparazzi. But if that, money, if that money was good, though, I probably could be paparazzi, but I wouldn't want to do But you got to get those good shots. Yeah, That's when you, that's the money shot. And that's when I'm car accident. Uh -uh. See, mm -hmm. I ain't got time to be chasing nobody on the fucking highway. I'll just say, hi, look, can I, I'm, I'm a struggling paparazzi. I don't have to see no black paparazzi. I do. I want to see a black. I'll be like, look, I'm struggling. I'm just trying to pay my bills. That's because black nice people know person. how to take pictures and bounce. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway... So, Speaking of drama, T.D. Jakes has a few things to say about Yes, uh, yes, you know what, no. T.D. Jakes hey. fucking... Hey. What the fuck was that? I don't T.D. Jakes tried it. Because, you know what, before you, before you talk about T.D. Jakes... <laughs> what? Let me just say, I really Jake like tried. the bishop... What's the, uh, not the bishops, the uh, preachers, preachers of the land. I really like the show, like, to when me... Come on. Wednesdays at 10. Okay. It doesn't, to me, it doesn't look like they're downgrading the community. You know, they just happen, you know, some of them, you, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know what's the right way to say it, but the ratchetness that I thought they were going to bring, they didn't bring. That's what drew me into the show. But, you know, T.D. Jakes <laughs> did go off on a there's rant. There's a lot of people. He went off. And you know what's so funny? Because there's a lot of people that solely disagree with you because I was at work and when I tell you the nurses at my job were furious about this show they were just like it's so they mostly was just talking about the whole lifestyle that these preachers live they were just like I can't believe they are flaunting all that and they was like one of them was like it's not even like I'm watching men of God it's like I'm just watching the male version of uh, I think she said Housewives or something like that. Like, <laughs> but for those of you that didn't hear about it, so T D so the YBF.com they have this post where T D T D Jakes Bishop T D Jakes blasts um the preachers of L A and calls the show junk, and he says he rebukes the show. So um, Oxygen's latest docu series preachers delivered the network's strongest debut um, ratings, one point one million. Wow. Um, but Dallas-based uh, megachurch leader B Bishop T.D. Jakes is not a fan. According to Buzz, B Bishop Jakes shared a few critiques of the show and its stars during his sermon at the Potter's House this past Sunday. 
here are some choice quotes. Now, I know you've been watching that junk on TV. I want to tell you right now, not one dime of what you're sewing right now will buy my suit. Ooh. Okay. I want you to know my car is paid for. I want, I want you to know that my car is paid for. I want you to know I got my house on my own. And I want you to know I got my house on my own. I want you to know I'm not bling blinging. I want you to know that I'm not out there bling blinging. I'm not shaking. And I ain't shaking it. I had money when I came to Dallas and I plan to have some when I leave. I had money when I came to Dallas and I have money when I plan on leaving Dallas. Okay? That's that's that calls for Yeah. <laughs> but CTD yeah. Jets tried it. Because every pass to me, every pass to start somewhere where you are using that money from your church to buy some of the things that you may need in your personal life because every pastor do not have a, a, a nine to five. Mm -hmm. Some of them live off of that, what they make from the church. Mm -hmm. So to those that are, you know, taking some fr from the church, you know, some of the money from the church to help them live, to me, that's like slapping them in the face, saying things like that. Because before T.D. Jakes, before you had movie deals, before you had book deals, mm -hmm. before you was going on Oprah and shit, you started out regular just like everybody but, else. But T.D. T. D. Jakes' message, his overall message, what he was saying was, none of what you, none of the offerings that you guys give me now, now, is buying any of this. He, what he's saying is, I had all this before I started doing this because he had his book deals and all his type of stuff. What his, his overall message is, you need to be giving back instead of taking. Well, I because, think you should have dressed up in that way. Like, don't, yeah, but don't, I th don't, don't, don't sit but there I think anymore anybody, you're accomplishing. No, yeah, true. But I think, I think what... Who? Jeremy. <laughs> you're snoring. <laughs> no, I wasn't. Yeah, you were. <laughs> you're snoring. Um, I know you're tired, but you're snoring. <laughs> um, I'm tired too. Okay, and, I'm, and I gotta get my workout. I've been up since six o'clock this morning, and I ain't go to bed till two. I'm tired, but uh, and I'm hungry. Um, but I think the message that TD Jakes was trying to get, well, the message that he was, not I think, was instead of y'all on TV saying what it is that y'all have, and then having, first of all, I just thought that I, to me. You got to be a little bit more smart. Okay? And this is what I'm about to say. You have to be a little bit more smart. Because pastors and preachers already get a bad rep from a lot of people who don't attend church or who do attend church and they feel as though a lot of them are flaunting. If you were on a show like Preachers of LA, as good as you say it is and as good as what I saw, why would you allow them to show a clip of you walking up, not just you, but you walking up to a house where you got <laughs> these, with not the entourage, but these brand new fancy dancy cars sitting in the driveway. I just, you gotta be, this, it's, you gotta think about it. It's all, it, my boss says this to me all the time. Every time I get into something with somebody, she always says to me, perception is key. It may not have been what it is that you intended, but it is what someone perceived. If you are walking up to a house, first of all, a mansion, and you walk up to this mansion and you have a brand new Range Rover, you have a brand new Benz and a brand new Mercedes, people are looking at this and like, the hell? Because I think it's because they live in well. Yeah, well, but I think that's something that they should have at least not shown. But then you know they're gonna show. But it they should have. Like, but somebody should have said from the bishops or the bishops camp. Maybe y'all shouldn't show that because at the end of the day, it ain't about what we got in our driveway. It's the message that we're trying to give out there. And I think that at the end of the day, when people see that, they start to get a bad taste in their mouth, especially when you already got people out there saying. This, that, and the third. Now, I don't care if they're going to drive the head. If you're going to drive it, then drive it. But I think perception is key because when you stop and think about it, a lot of these reality shows with these people who are not pastors in them, or preachers, half the time you don't even see the type of cars that they drive. That's a thing. Yeah, but <laughs> that's, yeah, that's true. That's a thing. That car. Like when you but look at the, when you, you look at the, because when you look at the, uh, like the Atlanta Housewives, all they now that they can go by is the size of their house. Yeah. Like, but like that's not they, to say that they don't have they, cars. But they, yeah, not to say they don't have cars, but they're probably not able to have 
a real nice expensive car, but they could get a nice house, and then the shade would be, oh well, well, look, well you, at least you, you're renting your house, and I bought my house. Well, I'm like, almost you, certain that they can get a nice car. You guys, it would take too much to lease a car. Well, I think, well, <laughs> you lease a car. You know, but you know, with the passes, that's that's what they're that's what they're going to show. But you know, to me, that's not you know everything that they represent. No, no, it's not. But I mean, I, I to me, I really didn't. I, for me, just for me, I didn't care about that. What I seen was when you got a pastor that has three to four thousand people in the congregation, you're you're making money off of that, of course. But I'm not saying that you know this is just what you do. You're you're just uh mac taking the money from the people in your church. That's not saying you're not feeding the children in your neighborhood. That you're not feeding children in other countries. You're not you're not um doing anything to help you know do scholarships in your church. It's not saying that you're not doing that, but hopefully they will show that, like they are showing them doing conventions and like like that thing Dietrich Hatton had. That was a good. That was really good when he had. That little gospel thing, mm -hmm. and how uh, one of the pastors got the two guys together to join, to get saved, and to help find them in church. Like, that was good. Nobody's talking about the good that came out on that show. For me, I got to know where these pastors come from. Some of them came from a, a, a drug background, where they were on drugs or in the gang or selling drugs. And, you know, they came up out of that and went into the church. Nobody is applauding them for what they've been through. All they are saying, oh, but why are they showing the the, uh, the cars and look at the house? They are blessed to have that house. They can live in a regular room home, but they don't have to. You're not obligated to. That's just like saying, oh, a singer has millions of dollars. And because they make all this money singing and stuff, they 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 don't need they they can't have a big house. Why can't a pastor have a big well, house? Well, nobody's not telling them that they can't have a big house, and nobody's not telling them. That but they, you got I seen a lot of the but, comments. But it, well, I'm not telling them they can't have a big house, and I have damn straight telling them that they can't drive a nice car. Mm -hmm. But I think is what it is. You have to be careful of what it is that you put out there, because if you put out there that you drive in this all this and living like this, naturally the stuff that you said that's the good stuff is gonna fly out the window. That's going to all fly out the window because everybody's going to be like, well, because they're so fuck? concerned on what they're driving. That's what people do. That's exactly what they do. And the shade of it all is, like T.D. Jake says, instead of you showing us how it is that you're making all this money, show us how it is that you give back. But instead, you got somebody like Bishop McClendon saying, oh, no, I need to get paid for this. I need to get paid for this. Oh, my no, way. he was wrong. He needs to get paid for that. He needs to get paid for that. And he needs to get paid just for coming with me. I think that's the point that T.D. Jakes is making. How on earth are you going to be a bishop? And yet, you're supposed to be a man of God, and you're supposed to be the man of talking about giving back. But yet, you're talking about how it is you can make more money, and then you and your entourage can make more money. But see, I, I would have, I would have loved for TD Jakes to. Oh, he. Ooh, I'm gonna have him to say the name. I'm about to cut you off. TD Jakes needs to host a reunion. But here we go. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's time to go. <laughs> Time to go. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch! No, you didn't do it! No, you didn't say that! Can you just, if it, oh, just, I just got all this chill through my body. Oh, that's alright. Baby, no, alright, baby. Alright, that right there. Can you imagine? Wow! Wendy was. Because. Because <laughs> you know he's gonna get them together. The Bible says, Bitch, tweet that <laughs> so I can retweet that. Because you want to talk about ratings? Everybody from the channel to watch it. Oh, girl. <laughs> and Tyler Perry, too. Okay, you know, and you know what? Because <laughs> don't, don't let what I'm oh, saying, so I'm going to get just like this. That is <laughs> Oh, that is going to be a good one if it happens. <laughs> but what I was what I was thinking was I if TD Jakes actually did, because I was thinking what I was thinking was blew my out of water. <coughs> if TD Jakes is so worried about what these other pastors are doing and putting on TV, he has his own TV company and production, and he does films and everything. Why don't you produce your own 
show with preachers in <laughs> LA or preachers in Atlanta or preachers in Philadelphia. Won't you do something like that? Since you want to degrade, not degrade, but you know, not what they're doing and show them the right way to do a show. If that's what you want to do, you can do that. But TD Jake's hosting that. And him giving his opinion on, oh, that would be a sermon. That wouldn't even be a reunion because he would sit there, line them up, and try to get each one of them together. But I have my favorite. My favorite is the one that did the man cave on the show. That's my favorite so far. Like, he hasn't been bad, but he got a nice car. But, you know, maybe, uh, whatever. Whatever's whatever. But um, I want to talk about, did you hear about uh, what you call him today? Uh, Kenan Thompson and his statement on why there aren't any black women on Saturday Night Live. He was saying, and I don't want nobody to think I'm taking it out of context, but he was saying that the reason why there aren't any black women on Saturday Night Live because the women that come to the auditions are just not ready to be on TV. Mm -hmm. Now, this is my problem with that. Saturday Night Live has been on NBC for 38 years. And out of 38 years, <coughs> you have only hired four black women. Let that, let that settle the fuck in. Now see, this is where I'm mad at Keenan Thompson. Because you've been on SNL for a good seven years. And now you got Jay Farrell on there. I'm like, y'all the only two black people on there since Maya Rudolph. Maya Rudolph, see, I'm not, see, see. Let me just, I'll say it. I'll say it. I will fucking say it. Maya Rudolph. If you didn't know Maya Rudolph's background, you wouldn't have known she was black. Okay. Point taken. I'm just saying. If you didn't know who her mother was, you didn't know she was colored. You didn't know. I when before I knew that her mother was um what's her Maya name? Rudolph. Uh, I mean, uh, Minnie Rippleton. Min, Minnie Rippleton. Before I knew that was her mother, I thought Maya Rudolph was a, a white woman mixed with like uh Indian or something. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that her mother was black. I didn't know that. Yeah. Cause Maya Rudolph, you know, I didn't know she was black. Just like Lala. Lala, Carlo Carmelo and just Puerto Rican. I know. Well, yeah, but I thought she was black. Oh. And then I found out that she was, no, full-blooded Puerto Rican. I was like, ah. oh. <laughs> I thought she was black. Well, I did. I did think wow. she was black. I thought she was black. You know why I thought she was black? Because my naive ass, for the longest time, really did believe that her and Ludacris was brother and sister. Because oh, years ago, they used to say that they were brothers and sisters. And I thought that they were brothers and sisters. And then you couldn't tell me when she was on TRO back in the day that she wasn't a hood rat black chick. Mm. You know? I thought she was black, and and it's no shade to my my uh me, what's her name my Rudolph. Rudolph. It's no shade to her, but Kevin didn't want to say it, so I said it. If you didn't know who her mother was, you wouldn't have thought she was black. And I think that in thirty eight years, y'all only on y'all only had four black women. I mean, okay, Keenan, I understand that you say that the people who come into the audition they they may not be ready. Fine, because let me tell you something. A show like SNL, you don't want nobody who's not ready. You want somebody who is ready. Because that's a legendary show. And you don't want no amateurs on that show. You want them who are going to know what the fuck they're doing. But at the same damn time, you ain't going to sit here and tell my black bald head ass that in 38 years, all these black ass women who came up in those auditions for 38 fucking years wasn't ready. If Betty White, 88 year old ass, was ready in 2010, you mean tell me y'all couldn't find a 38 year old black woman who, was re who wasn't ready? Like, come on, I know Betty White has been around for a long ass time and I know I shouldn't have really compared her, but come on. Keenan, that really does not make sense to me. Well, it it don't make sense at all. And then you got it's funny black women on YouTube. Hell, they could have hired Devil Wilson from yeah, that man TV and do oh, it. Cause she could have been doing them with these fucking things. Okay? So some people got mad at me. What? And I said, that's a slap to people like Sherry Shepard. Okay. People like They could have uh, her on. Uh Sherry Shepard, uh Deborah Wilson. Uh, who else? Monique. It's a lot of these. And why, why I'm saying not just stand up, but they also act. Can you imagine if Lunell was on fucking Saturday Night Live? Let's, 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 let's talk about it. 
If Lou Nell was on Saturday Night Live, I would watch that Can shit. you, um, every week. Mind I'd you. I'd be like, bitch, I ain't going to the club to after the Bitch, and Lunella. you wouldn't even have to give her a script. Just okay. give her a cup. She just go. <laughs> give, her, give her a red cup. And tell her, look, Lou Nell, here's your cup. Go. <laughs> go. <laughs> do your thing. Bitch. And she will go out there okay. and do her thing for that hour. And bring in about a half a million people. Yes. And then you let the other white people bring in the other half. And there you go. What? Because if you find, because if you really pay attention, Keenan was taking all the jobs from the black women because Keenan was playing all the women. Okay. Instead of them getting somebody. Like if you get somebody. <laughs> That's why he said that. Okay. Because he's taking. Well, Keenan, how about this? If you stop putting on a damn dress, maybe he'll find somebody. Now he's saying he's not doing women rules anymore. Oh well, now this is the perfect time to find. You can find an uh, average shaped woman. That could play the girl from the play Sherry Shepherd, could play um uh Whoopi or play uh Right. What's her name? It's a black it's a black girl or Oprah Winfrey, you know, oh, somebody that can do all of that because oh. Deborah Wilson play every fucking body. Oh, uh, and Deborah Wilson plays them down. Oh, down. And or how about call these people and ask them to come home? Because I'm sure Oprah will come as Oprah's trying to be as uh, people Positive, friendly, or whatever the word it is, as pop. Oprah's doing everybody's damn show. Mm -hmm. Oprah even did a damn. I was on the internet and I was seeing the thing and I thought it was so amazing. This guy had his own, what is it, the blog radio thing, and he wanted Oprah to call in and he kept tweeting her the thing. And she, wouldn't you know what? Oprah found the link and called into his I blog think radio Kim show. Pire, Kim Pire, I think that's what it was. And Kempire Radio is hiring. He's looking for bloggers too. Make sure y'all check that Let out. Let me tell you something. Y'all can get these people. Kenan Thompson, I am not here for your statement about they're just not ready. I'm not mm -hmm. here for it. I'm not here for it. And Jay Farrell, he thinks that, um, I was reading that. Sorry, y'all. He thinks that, what's the girl that Tyler Perry found? Tyler Perry found the girl from YouTube. Demir, Dem, Demira, Demir, I'm not sure. Somebody Brunson, her, but also Thomas. This is Robert Townsend. His daughter do, does comedy sketches. Like it's a lot of these girls on YouTube that could be found like that and brought on SNL. Like it don't to me. It don't take that long to get ready to do a damn show. If, if Betty White can do it, they could have done it too. Or well, if, but then again. Mm. But see, Matt TV, Matt TV, to me, Matt TV was always funnier than this. It does take long when you gotta do read to go over the scripts and then at the same time, because like I said, Betty White is legendary. <laughs> Betty White been doing this for over 60 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Mother knows how to read a script. Yes. Betty White can read yours and hers at the same damn time. And she's 90, <laughs> she's pushing 90, 90 92? fucking two next July, next, January. this January should be 92 and it's still out there making those coins. I always say if Betty White can do it, so can you. Because mm -hmm. there ain't no reason why this 92 year old is getting up every day and going to work. And these people say, oh, I don't feel like going, I can't, I'm, uh, uh, don't do it. Speaking of not going to work, <laughs> people with EBT. No, because see, no, that's shade. That was shade. No, no, no. I don't want to Because some of them do work. Yes, yes. You can work with an EBT. And get an EBT. It's just a your right. whole but, but if you if you look if you scour my neighborhood, <laughs> these girls don't work because I see them and I don't work. So I see them <laughs> and, and I, I know they don't work. Day. And they yeah. always in the store. And, and they always got grocery bags. Okay. And where are you getting this money from? Mm -hmm. The government. Doing the shutdown too? <laughs> Damn. But thank God for the girls with number. No, look, so look. So there was an EBT shutdown on Saturday. Next door was like, no EBT, <laughs> such and such. So, you know, honestly, a lot of people went hungry or whatever. Or a lot of people was thinking <coughs> this was due to the government shutdown. shutdown. Like, it kind of, to me, that's what I thought it was, too. But come to find out, in 17 states, um, EBT was down nationwide due to a problem with one of the credit card uh, bases. Credit card, one of the, actually it was a computer company system shut down. It was a glitch. Yeah, so it shut everybody's cars down. Um, honestly, I think that they need to fix that. That should never, ever happen. Yes, I know we live in a digital world and everything, but y'all should be making steps to make sure this don't happen because all that food that people had to put back on the shelves who were in the process of shopping or, you know, trying to trying to get food on the table for Sunday and they couldn't because the EBT cards were not working. And a lot of people just found it so funny. They just found it so funny that EBT was down. You know, people made jokes about it. 
People was just saying all kinds of stuff like, you know, somebody in their family never had government assistance or they might not have grown up on government assistance. You, to me, you don't, you don't laugh and, and make fun of things like that because there are children that is really hungry and I see it and all they could do is get a sandwich like because they mind not using the money right they got to go get a sandwich from the store and that's their damn dinner sandwich chips and a soda and that's it you know so I, I just didn't like that but I'm gonna really need the government to get their shit together with the EBT. Well, you know what? I don't think people were necessarily laughing it's going in. at that. I think that a lot of people were laughing at those folks who take advantage of the government with the EBT cards. Okay. And then now, since they want to actually use the EBT cards for what it actually is for, now they can't get their foods because they're too busy buying cigarettes and... <laughs> Sell these stamps and to get, to get stamps cash. Get well, it helped us out. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> I didn't see your church dance on that one. Who the hell out? Okay. No, no. 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 What the hell? Get my buddy. Okay. <laughs> Baby, we did some shot. No, but at the end of the day, put the water down. Because at the end of the day, we used that for what it was for. Yeah. Food. <laughs> okay. I didn't buy no clothes with that money. I couldn't. And he did to you. Know. We bought that for food. Who? For them. Okay? So we did what and we were supposed to do. And ain't nobody complaining. And ain't nobody complaining. They all had some. And then I didn't have one account. I said, you better eat that free food. But they was like, who made Maybe. this food? Okay. Maybe we went to save a fucking lot. We went to save we, a lot. So we, we went to put Wilson's. Nina together. We put Nina and her crew together. <laughs> and said... Go. <laughs> Bitch, we need to start doing this, making some orange when they food. Okay. All right. No, we we find, coming. No, we need to find a way out. Okay. <laughs> Bitch, lettuce from the school. <laughs> what you was about to say? Lettuce <laughs> at the school. Have your Bitch. mom's face on the thing. Okay. okay. The chef has chef yeah. bar. Chef <laughs> boy on the bar. The <laughs> bitch. <laughs> And have her voice playing yeah. the microphone. That's just how I feel uh, about it. He was like, I made everything. See, Nina likes that stuff. Yeah, like, Nina likes to cook. Like, she don't mind, you know, but. Because she can cook. Yeah, she can. And, and, she everybody, and everybody ate it. Like, mm -hmm. I hear nobody say not one bad thing no. about that food. And you know what the thing is with Nina? Nina knows how to cook, and then she knows how to find cooker, cooks to help her. Yes. Because she's going to say They helped her, too. I know they did that. <laughs> <laughs> Because guess who wasn't? Well, I wasn't cooking. Because I don't cook anything. I know Somebody will say to me, you don't look like you're cooking. Sure don't. Next year. Yeah, cook. Look, next year, next year, I'm really going to just say, Mikhail, you in charge of everything. We'll just put the money together and, and we'll that's just it. map everything on out. Yes. I'll just give you the vision of how I see it and that's it. <laughs> okay. Because I so can't. I'll be, your, I'll be your cookout planner. You'll be, yes, because I can't. I, I can't lie. It's a stressful thing. So I, I tip my hats to party planners. But that fucking wedding planner that was on Nene's oh show last week. Oh, my. And then when she had the nurse say, what the fuck did you hire? Oh, oh. first of all, that was, she, that was a slap in the face right okay. there. You're fired right there. You're, you're fired. You're fired. There's no need to have. Once you come at me like that and I'm paying you my money, bitch, you're going to do this shit the way I want it. You're not going to come. you want to say, well, what the fuck did you hire me for? Mm. Oh. And you can tell that was real, because yes, he great expression. And, and like, she made her own self look bad. See, that's the curse of the reality TV. Don't make yourself look bad, because Nene's show is viewed by millions of people. And you live in Atlanta, where the gays and the straights are marrying, <clears throat> okay? They are doing all kinds of stuff. And this is not good for your brand because you're going on TV cursing her out and being irresponsible, not sending pictures over when you're supposed to send them. You just fucked up mm -hmm. everything. And they got the nerve to get mad because she said something about it. Right. Because <laughs> I, I said something about it. So, I, I, and you're not going to give me no other 10 more damn things <laughs> because I said something about it. And you can take that and shut it. You take that to your corporate office. <laughs> See, that's what they don't want you to do. They don't want you to call the corporate office. I couldn't get over that. Every time I call that number, the main, main number, oh, 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 we can fix that problem right here. And then when you tell them what the problem is, don't get me wrong, they're very polite. Oh, there's not a rude person to answer the phone. I mean, they're all well-breaded on how to answer the phone. 
but they still haven't solved my problem with fixing my goddamn washing machine. My mom has a video coming this weekend. Okay. We'll see you. Absolutely. This is two two brand new washing machines in four years. <laughs> see, as y'all on a roll, I need to start making sure my, I need to tell my mom, stop making your washing machine, okay? Shut <laughs> Wait. They tired of your mom. Look, look at look at this. The women of SNL. How, the women of SNL. How, how weird is that? And only one of them is black, but then she don't know big one though. Look. You wouldn't you know that Mia Rudolph was black. No, seriously. If you don't know her background, you wouldn't know that. Why is he hiring? I wanted to ask Kristen a question. Okay, Maya. Go ahead. Um, why did you choke my dog? What? <laughs> why did you choke <laughs> <That's so> my <laughs> dog? I didn't choke your dog. It's was hugging your dog and he wiggled and he got tangled up in his halter tongue. She choked my dog till he passed out, y'all. No, oh, no, I didn't. Okay, okay. Oh, 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 okay. That's how them girls feel, huh? Look. You know what? You know what? I, I actually think now would be a great time to throw to Amy and Julia and Lorraine in Los Angeles. Hey, I'm ladies. I'm trying to take the beat right. too, boy. It's so good to see you. So, let me help you raise something up too. Are we done? No, because oh. there's something else I had to say. Oh, well, come on. Let me hit record. Oh, this is on the Hip Hop Awards? Yeah, I don't think. If they show a re. Wait, I hope they're showing a re. Yeah, let me just record it. I hope they're showing a repeat, though. You know they Who's that? Talking. Kevin Hart, Corny ass. Oh, that's you. Kevin Hart ain't Corny. No, I'm talking about. No, I heard your phone. That's what I heard. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm about to say, speaking of Drake. Um, uh, Wait, have you name? seen all that weight Rick Ross has lost? Good child, it's still in his stomach. No, he's a little bitch, okay. The oh. stomach's got to come down. You right. See, Gradually. Mom? Gradually. I mean, it's come down. Yeah, you, but a six-pack ain't going to pop up. I don't want him to have a six-pack. I just want him to keep a shirt on while his stomach is coming down. <laughs> okay, is that too much to ask? Can you imagine going out to eat one? Mm -mm. Oh, I can't he, either. He, as long as he pay. Oh, 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 oh right. Okay. I can do it. I'll sit there and listen to him. I want dinner and dessert. You know how the waitress, waitress come over and they be like, Would you, are you guys in eating dessert? No, no, not the hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bring me the dessert man. Hey, yeah. Bon appetit. I don't, okay. I don't really. Is that future right there with that dress on? No, that's um, that's uh, 2 chains. Oh, 2 chains. And who was that with him? I would not want to go to a show like that. First of all, that venue is small, and it's just like they just start arguing. And you know they're so unorganized because it's never yeah. live. It's never live, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, time to close Well, you know what? It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, time to close it's time to close to shut the show down. Yeah, it's time to shut the show down. It was down. another topic. I can't remember. But we'll get back to it sometime this week. Okay, ratchet. Yes. <laughs> and, and like I said, my mother will be making an appearance this week. She's going to talk about her serious fiasco. Okay. We went to Sears. We picked out a new shopping washing machine. Shout out to Dennis for coming to pick us up. Didn't he say, I don't even want no gas, man. I said, oh, all right. That was nice. Yeah. Because he felt bad. <laughs> Sears <laughs> done raped y'all through the cold. <laughs> they have raped y'all through. Ooh, we look like Easy E with the red hat. Don't you? Yes, who is that? He look like one of my followers on Instagram. Well, you know what? We want to go. He do. Holla at y'all in a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>